What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and UFC Vegas 84 Magomed Ankalaev vs Johnny Walker just took place and I'm going to be going through the entire card starting with the first prelim ending with the main event and giving my reaction and recap of the card. Uh, I live streamed the whole thing on my YouTube channel so um, I, the replay is up, go check it out. I put timestamps as well so you can see uh, when each fight started but let's start off with Joshua Van versus Felipe Bunez. I picked Joshua Van in this fight. And he got it done by second round TKO. Kind of dropped the first round, didn't do too much. But that's pretty much what he does in all of his fights. He came back in the second round and absolutely put the pepper on. Felipe Bunez just cooked him up. Landed big shots, knees, punches. Like he was just, it's hard to even tell what even landed at times. Like he was just constant output. I th he landed one shot that kind of rocked him a little bit. And then he was just putting the combos together. I'm telling you. Once this guy gets going with the combinations, he's got some of the best boxing in the UFC already. I'm telling you, the way he throws punches, how quickly he throws those punches, gets the body shots in, gets out of exchanges. This guy's boxing is really good. Um, past first round, Joshua Van is a mythical fighter because he looked a bit average in the first, looked like he was struggling with the range, but then straight away, second round, and he's just immediately on him, cooked him up even got a i think he got a takedown at 1.2 but yeah just dominated the second round i th i was hoping he would get it to the third because i picked josh fan by third round tk i thought he would really pick it up late but he basically picked it up straight after the first round so great win from joshua Van. i think he deserves like a ranked opponent next or maybe just outside the rankings but he looked incredible in this fight looking forward to seeing him again he said he wants to be active he said he wants to fight five times six times this year go for it he's fighting in january that's one down Get him back in there in like March, honestly. Chuck him on a fight night in March, easy. Get him in the apex again, like that's fine. There's some weak cards, he'll add some interest to them. So yeah, Joshua Van, keep it going. Great stuff. The next fight on the card was Tom Nolan versus Nicholas Motta. I picked Tom Nolan just like everyone because he was meant to be a really good prospect that was going to KO Nicholas Motta, who isn't good, but he got chinned by Nicholas Motta in the first round. He was trying to use his range too much, like he was... He was too comfortable in on the inside. Like he looked the way he was defending shots looked like he thought that he was out of range. But he came in and he's just there and his hands are like here. Like he's just he's open. And he just got cracked, put down, and then ground and pounded to a finish. Badly finished by Nicholas Motta. Good win for Motta. Killed the prospect. But who cares? You shouldn't be fighting in the you shouldn't be in the UFC six and zero unless you've had so much experience outside of combat sports or like, you're Pereira or, like, Bo Nickel. Those are the fucking only two examples where you should be in the UFC at 6-0. and Doesn't mean anything. You have to actually be proven and have more experience. So, tough loss for Nolan. Great win for Mata. Uh, gets, keeps his job in the UFC because if he lost this, he probably would have been cut. But the next fight was... Uh, it was Weston Wilson versus Gene Silva was the fight that took place. Great fight. Uh, great performance from Gene Silva. He KO'd Weston, or TKO'd him in the first round. He was just beating him up the whole time. Uh, Wilson's striking's awful. Gene Silver's got power and can actually throw punches. Um, he cracked him badly, like he dropped him, and then he wobbled him, and he just, he kept just whacking him in the face, and just, he looked like he was just gonna go out with every shot, but Wilson kept managing to stay in there, and then eventually, the last shot, he put him down again, and the ref just like, yeah, fuck, this guy's getting beaten up. Just stepped in. Easy win for Gene Silver. Definitely look forward to seeing him next. His post-fight interview was interesting too. Uh, definitely severely autistic. Um, <laughs> he gave us a full reenaction of the sequence. Told us that that's what they trained for. Said basically nothing else. And then barked at the camera. Refuses to elaborate. Put his glasses on the translator. And just dipped. So good stuff from Gene Silver. Very interesting kind of guy. Look forward to seeing him back in there soon. But the next fight was Fareed Basharat versus Taylor Lapulus. I picked Basharat to win a decision here, and he did so. Uh, pretty much went exactly as I suspected. Um, got the takedowns at will. He, I thought Lapos would have a bit more success, but Basharat just took him down so, so easily. He had a guillotine attempt towards the end of the third round, but there wasn't a lot of striking that took place, but it was all Basharat, takedowns, control time, good grappling. I wouldn't mind seeing him versus a ranked opponent next. I could see why you don't give him a ranked opponent straight away. Like now he's 3-0 and in the UFC. Um, I think he's like 11-0 and overall or something like that. But great win from Basharat. 
I think he could be ranked quality right now, but I don't mind if you give him a few more fights first. But yeah, ranked opponent wouldn't mind. I'll match make for him with my on to the next one, like next fights to make video coming out soon. But the next fight was Marcus McGee versus Gaston Bolaños. I picked Marcus McGee to win by sub. I think I might have put him by KO in my um in my actual prediction video, but I went with my like on my bets as I went by Marcus McGee by sub. He got it done by TKO. Um was just beating him up. First round was relatively competitive, and then from my memory, yeah, just came out in the second round, really got the boxing combinations going better. Was it the first? Let me just double check this. I think it should have been, um, I'm pretty sure it was second round, but yeah, he, he was just putting the combos together really well, hurt Bolaños badly, was landing great uppercuts, um, great punches, just cooking him up. Let me just check. It was the second round. Yeah, so I knew first round wasn't, he clearly won the first round, but it was relatively close. Comes out second round and just pieces him up and gets the finish. Again, similar to the Gene Silver finish. Um, he just like, Bolanos just kept getting hurt. And then eventually, finally one shot was like, just like, yeah, he's kind of not defending himself. So he steps in. But great win from uh, Marcus McGee. I think, again, he deserves a ranked opponent too. And I'll tell you who I think he should be fighting in tomorrow's video or later on's video. But... Uh, the next fight on the card was Matthew Semmelsberger versus Preston Parsons. I picked Semmelsberger to win by either TKO or decision based off knockdowns, but he couldn't find his shots. Uh, he looked pretty slow, he looked stiff, he didn't look good, and he wasn't able to find the shots that normally put people down. Because uh, what I expected was Parsons better, but I expected him to like land a few shots and win rounds based based off damage, like he should have done against Semmelsberger because he won that fight but got robbed, like he did against, um, even dropped Urus Medic, dropped Jack Matthews, like he drops pretty much everyone he fights, but Parsons stayed out of range, didn't get cracked, mixed in some takedowns too, third rounds came, he needed a finish, and Samuelsberger kept pulling guillotines, he was trying, but it wasn't working, and he lost 30-27, so good win from Preston Parsons, but the next fight on the card was Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Andre Arlovsky, this was awful, probably the only, like, bad fight on the card, it was 15 minutes of nothing. Waldo Cortez Acosta was showboating for while he was meanwhile doing fuck all and not doing anything. It didn't even hurt Arlovsky that badly at all. Like he landed a few shots, but you should be finishing 45 year old Arlovsky. In the stream uh, when I was live streaming, chat and me were fucking going off. We were having a great time because we're basically just saying every single historical event that Arlovsky's been there for. Like we're saying Arlovsky just invented fire. Arlovsky was fucking there for like storm for the battle of hastings like he was the the leader of the communist revolution like we were all just making fun of him and saying how the fuck is waldo fin not finishing this old fuck but rebellus to spain uh tweeted at him wasn't too impressed with the performance and uh let's just say uh, i might be uh match making that fight next rebellus to spain versus waldo cortez acosta because that was an awful performance how the fuck do you not finish andre olofsky who is literally ancient and got ko'd by Don Tail Mays. How are you not finishing him? He, Waldo Cortez is not good at fighting. He's just another typical shit heavyweight. And the KO win in his last fight meant fuck all. It was a one-off performance. But we move on. Bruno Fajaya versus Phil Hawes. I picked uh, Bruno Fajaya by KO in round one, which was really the logical call to make. And he got it done by KO in round one. Again, Phil Hawes, as he always does, looks okay early. Fajaya got a takedown, which was nice. And then Phil Hawes was doing all right. But then, bam. He just cracked him once. He got him with a knee. Uh, and then Hawes is incapable of recovering. As soon as he's rocked, he can't recover. He's dead. And yeah, right at the end of the round, um, uh, Fajaya just put him down. And it, it was weird because it looked like he kind of fell backwards a little bit and he was still okay. But then as he fell backwards and then he hit the ground, he just went unconscious. So Phil Hawes has no chin. There's three things guaranteed in life. Um, taxes, death, and uh, Phil Hawes getting KO'd in round one. So yeah, that's tough for um tough for Phil Hawes. He's probably going to get cut now, but great win from Fajaya. And he called out Shara Magomedov. I like that fight. That's a pretty cool call out. Good stuff from him. But the next fight that we had was Simone, uh, Ricky Simone versus Mario Bautista. I picked Simone to win a decision. I thought he was going to be more well-rounded, use the grappling, land the bigger shots on the feet. But Bautista's boxing was on point in this fight. He got dropped in the first round and should have lost it, even though two of the scorecards still gave it to him. But regardless, came back in the second, looked great. Simone just wasn't able to find his shots and he was tuning him up in the second. And then third round came, Simone got a big slam and I was like, okay, cool, he could hold him down here, he can win this round, maybe even win the fight if the judges gave him the first round. But no, 
Batista gets back up. Uh, Simone kept rushing top position and lost it, um, going for like guillotines and shit. And then, yeah, Batista just put an absolute pace on him and was close-ish to finishing him towards the end of the fight too. But I picked it to go to decision. I knew it would. And it did go decision. But great performance from Batista. Definitely a way better performance than his last fight where he kind of uh, got gifted a decision against Amon Blackshear. Simone, I thought he was still going to be really good after the song fight because he held it relatively competitive for most of the time. But Batista just put a pressure on him, put the pace on him, and his striking looked really good. So fair play to him. The next fight was Jim Miller versus Gabriel Benitez. I picked Miller by first round KO. He got a third round sub. So fair play to him. But... Yeah, he looked great. Landing the leg kicks looked pretty quick. He got beat it up, not beaten up, but like he takes damage. He doesn't take damage well. Like his face, I watched his post fight press conference just then. He does look pretty damaged, but yeah, he was landing great leg kicks. He looked way quicker, was landing good shots, but yeah, it was a lot of leg kicks and then a lot of grappling in the second and third round, which was impressive. Um, and he got the sub. It was like a rear naked, but kind of across the chin, just squeezing on his jaw, sort of. So good win from Jim Miller. Uh, and he called out Paul Feld, he called out Matt Brown, either of those two for 300, he just said he wants to be on there. And I like either of those fights. I would prefer Feld at 155, or at least Feld, or even if it's a 170, because it's a, at least a lightweight. But Matt Brown, I don't think would be a great fight for Miller. He's way bigger than him at welterweight, I don't think. Miller's not even a big lightweight, so I don't know why he wants to go to welterweight. He is like a bit chunky, but he's not a big guy, so he shouldn't go to welterweight in my opinion, but... Who cares? Miller versus anyone on 300. And Bobby Green or something like that. Anyone works. Good win. But the main event was Mugger Mount Kalaya versus Johnny Walker. I picked Walker to kind of just catch him with a funny shot and do something dumb. It was like, I knew he wasn't really going to win. Like, I'm not going to cope. I'm not going to be like MMA Guru called it an early stoppage. But I had a, I was like, logically, Young Kalaya's obviously going to win. But I was like, yeah, Walker could probably catch him. Maybe chew up his legs, catch him with a big shot. And he looked solid in the first round. It was throwing some crazy shit, landing some good leg kicks. Uncle Ive wasn't doing a whole lot either. Uh, but then second round, yeah, Walker leaves himself out of position so much. He overextends on shots. He leaves himself out of position with his defenses down, and he just always gets caught for it. So it's unfortunate for Johnny Walker. He's incapable of breaking into that top five spot. He's always just going to be the guy to lose any time he gets there and then get the fun KOs against everyone else. So unfortunate for Walker. His chin is still dead. Uh, and Uncle Live KO'd Walker in the second round. Um, was not an early stoppage. Uh, it wasn't early. I picked Walker, but like, he put him down. And then that follow-up shot, like, stiff. He's doing like that. Like, you could tell that was stiff. He was sitting up against the fence. So that's the only reason why he wasn't, like, down. Um, but it was a perfectly fine stoppage. Pereira. Uh, so Uncle Live called out Pereira. He probably could get that fight. Especially because it was a KO. Definitely won't be on 300. I know some people are saying that. Like, No. They're not main eventing Uncle Live. They're not doing Uncle Live in the main event and Bilal in the co-main event of 300. That is just assault. That is assault of the fans. But it could happen at some point. Maybe in uh, May, if uh, Jamal Hill's not back by then, he could jump in quickly and just get that one done. I would pick Pereira to win. I still think he would chew up his leg kick, chew up his legs. Uncle Live didn't shoot at all. I think people forget because he's Dagestani. He's mostly a striker. Uncle Live is, for the most part, a striker. He does shoot when he's in a bit of trouble, but... Uncle Ives a striker. I think he would stand with Pereira for a bit of it. And I think Pereira could stuff some of his takedowns. And when they're on the feet, just chew up his legs and cook him up. But great win from Uncle Live. Unfortunately, I got my first main event wrong of the year. I went uh, seven and four on picks. I got, uh, starting from the card, I got Van correct. I got Nolan wrong. I got Silver right. I got Basharat right. I got McGee right. I got Semmelsberger wrong. I got Acosta right. I got Fajaya right. I got Simone wrong, Miller right, and Walker wrong. So yeah, four picks wrong. That was like a 64% prediction rate. So not awful, but not an amazing start to the year. It is what it is. I started off last year way better. I, sw I got 10 out of 11 last year for the first card. So anyway, those are the fights. We'll be back with uh, the next fights to make for every key fighter on the card video. And then I got predictions for 297. I got a Sean Strickland mini documentary coming out. I'll do a press conference reaction at some point during the week. And any other fight announcements that need to be covered, I'll have those covered too. So keep it locked in on the channel. Bunch more videos coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.